Hey guys, Chris Heron here with Wallings Implement. Just wanted to say thank you for your purchase of a Coyote CK SC Series tractor. We're going to be going over some of the features, benefits, and service points on the unit you just purchased. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go over your uh, daily inspections, the things you want to check for before you go ahead and get started using your tractor. First thing we're going to do is pull this lever down here to lift the hood. Now that the hood's up, the first thing you want to do is check our radiator screen, make sure it's not full of debris. So on this side of the tractor, there are a couple things you want to look at. Your coolant reservoir right here. Uh, there's a low and a full, you just want to make sure the coolant level is in between those two. Your engine oil dipstick is right here. You want to pull it out, wipe it off, replace it, pull it back out, and you want to make sure your engine oil level is in between the two check marks. On the back of the tractor, you're going to check your hydraulic oil, which is this dipstick right back here on the rear end. Pull it out, same thing, you want to wipe the oil, replace it back in, pull out again, and make sure it's within the operating range. So we're going to go over the inside of your cab and some of the different uh, features and functions that we have. First thing I'm going to go over the seat. Um, it is a nice suspension seat. This lever right here, you rotate it clockwise to increase the stiffness and rotate it counterclockwise to decrease the stiffness. Um, this lever right here moves the seat forward and backwards to get your desired position. The controls we have up here is your rear window defrost, your working lights, your uh, front and rear wiper, and then you also have your PTO control. This is an electric PTO. To engage the PTO, you push down and turn it. When you engage the PTO, you want to be at a low engine RPM, and then after that, you want to run the engine RPM up to operating speed. To disengage the PTO, you simply push down on it, and the unit turns back to the off position. This SC Series tractor is equipped with two rear hydraulic remote valves. Both of these control an individual remote. This extends the remote, and this retracts the remote. Same controls for both of them. This is your three-point hitch control with your three-point hitch depth stop. Once you find the desired height you want to run the three-point at, whether you be mowing or running a box scraper, you can unscrew this, set it to whatever height you desire to allow for consistent depth control when you're mowing or grading. This is our loader control valve. Um, some of the operations and functions here, you're going to pull this in to roll the bucket back, you're going to push it out to dump the bucket forward, you're going to pull back to lift the bucket up, and you're going to push down to put the bucket down. Um, if you go all the way past down, this puts the bucket into float, which is basically just gravity, it just lets the weight of the bucket rest on the ground. You can use this for back dragging or grading, um, or for when you go to store the tractor. Some of the controls here on the bottom of the control panel by where your foot rests, um, the first one here, this is your draft control for your three-point hitch. So what this does is it controls the speed of descent of your three-point hitch as it goes down. Um, for heavy, heavier implements, when you lower them, they're going to want to go down a lot faster. Um, so you want to turn it counterclockwise. And in doing that, um, it makes the hydraulic flow restricted, so the implement will lower more gently. Um, if you want it to lower faster, you turn it towards the rabbit and it speeds it up. This over here is our front wheel drive, four wheel drive. So if it's up, it's disconnected. If it's down, it'll be engaged. Um, if you push down on it and it doesn't seem like it wants to go in, a helpful hint is to push the hydraulic, or to push the transmission pedal forward just a little bit. And in doing that, um, it'll help it slide into the four wheel drive position. This is our differential lock. The differential lock is to be used when you're in situations where you need the maximum traction and less steering. Um, when you engage the differential lock, it locks both rear tires together, um, but it does inhibit your turning ability quite a bit. When you engage this, you push down on it. Um, again, you may need to push forward on the hydrostatic pedal to get it to fall into place. You want to engage both the four-wheel drive and the, and the uh, differential lock when you are not spinning. So you want to stop what you're doing, engage both of them, and then continue. So on this side over here, we have our transmission selector. Uh, this tractor is equipped with a low, medium, and high range. Um, you're probably going to spend most of your time in low and medium range. These are kind of going to be your work, your work ranges. High is normally used to transport between locations on the farm or uh, running up and down the road. Um, a helpful hint again here when you're switching from low to medium or medium to high, if it seems like the, it does not want to go into the desired gear, push forward on the higher static pedal just a little bit and that will help it pop in. This is your uh, diesel particulate fill regeneration switch. Uh, we'll have a separate part of the video that it kind of explains the system and what this switch does. This is obviously your four-way hazards. And over here, beneath the steering column, 
we have our cruise control so you set that to there and it turns it on you would push you would get to the desired speed and then push that button and it'll maintain that constant speed this shuts it off here we have our auto and manual PTO switch um, manual mode would behave like a normal PTO when you have it switched to the auto mode, what it does is when you lift the three-point hitch, like if you're running a tiller or a mower or something like that, when the three-point hitch reaches a certain height, it will actually disconnect the power to the PTO, and then when you put it back down, it'll turn it back on. A couple different level levers over here on this side. This right here controls your steering column, lets you set it to what's most comfortable. This right here is your linked pedal switch. Um, as you can see right now, it's in the off position. When you switch it to up here, the linked pedal would come on. What the link pedal does is it matches your ground speed with engine RPM, so it automatically controls the throttle. When the link pedal is off, you control the throttle manually and independent of the hydrostatic transmission. All right, guys, we're going to go over the three-point hitch here and some different features on the SC Series tractor. Um, the first and probably the most noticeable feature is the ability that you have to extend your three-point arms with this right here. Um, what it does is it makes it a lot easier to hook up the implements because you don't have to be right next to it. You know, if your three-point pin's right here, you can kind of adjust this as it is and it allows you to get both of them hooked on. Once you do get both these hooked on, you would make sure you back into the implement though, so it goes all the way down and comes back into the locked position. The other neat feature about the SC Series tractors is these uh, links that we have for the lower part of the three-point hitch. You can pull this out and it make, makes it move nice and easy. Um, this also really assists in hooking up implements and also gives you a variety of different selections to set how wide you want the three-point hitch to be while you're operating. So you have a couple adjustment options here when you're hooking up your three-point hitch. The first one here is your top link. Um, this turn buckle right here, you would loosen this set screw and as you rotate this back and forth, it's gonna control the pitch of the implement front to rear. Um, another control point that you have on here is the turnbuckle on this lower third arm. When you manipulate this turnbuckle, it adjusts the pitch of the implement side to side. Another feature on the SC Series tractor is this outboard three-point hitch control next to the same linkage that's in the cab. And moving this allows you to move the three-point hitch up and down without having to get back in the tractor. So while you're hooking up, this is really handy. A quick example here, you know, say you need to go down a little bit more, you just lower the lever and the three-point hitch goes down. The other couple things I'm going to show here, this blue and this black, these are your two rear remotes that we talked about in the cab earlier on in the video. So we're going to go over the procedure of how to start this tractor. Um, there's a few things that will prevent the tractor from starting. Um, the first one over here is the PTO switch. If the PTO is engaged, it's not going to let the tractor start. The other thing is, is you need to have your foot on the brake or the park brake needs to be engaged, which is down here. Lift up on it to engage it. And then on the other side, your gear shift, which we talked about earlier on the video, this needs to be in the neutral position for starting the tractor. To start, so start the tractor, you turn the key to the ignition position. Let the dash cycle. Go ahead and start the tractor. When starting in cold or inclement weather, um, this tractor has glow plugs that help it start. So what you'll do is you'll turn the key and the glow plug indicator will come on. Um, if it was cold, it would stay on until the glow plug has ran its cycle. Once the glow plug is finished running its cycle, you can go ahead and attempt to start the tractor. So now we're gonna go over how to remove the loader. First thing we're gonna do here is put down our loader stands. To do this, put your palm of your hand right here, push forward, and it comes down. Go ahead and take this and secure it. And you do that on each side. Once the loader bracket is down and pushed back, you wanna go ahead and remove your pins. You wanna do this on each side.
So this switch right here deals with your diesel particulate filter. So what the diesel particulate filter is, it's that silver canister underneath the hood. It catches all the black soot that comes out of the engine. Um, and when the, when, the, when the filter gets full, it has to regenerate, which means it burns at a hot temperature and basically cleans the filter out. Um, when this happens, an icon comes on on the dash and lets you know that it's happening. While it's happening, you just want to keep doing what you're doing. Don't shut the tractor off. Just keep maintaining, mowing, or whatever you're doing. Um, if you do not want the tractor to regenerate, say you're in a barn and you don't want that hot exhaust coming out, you can hit the inhibit button, which is this right here, and it'll prevent the tractor from regenerating.